So what I did there is uh, got the uh, body mounts there up front, got those ground down real quick. And then all the other stuff is uh, just dust that I blew off. When, when this was over in the body shop, it just got covered in, in sanding dust and whatever. <clears throat> and uh, I wanted to get it all cleaned off so I can kind of see what the hell I'm doing because some of it was just piled on here. So, so like I was saying, if you guys have any ideas with the motor mounts, some trick ideas, let me know what you got. I'm open for all ideas. I was thinking about having maybe like some pieces of plasma cut so I can put them in there and, you know, with a, like a logo or something. I don't know. Endless possibilities. So I guess I'll go ahead and get the wheels pulled off. So what I did right there is I just got the wheels pulled off and then uh, the next step I'll be doing is uh, pulling the brakes, calipers, bearings, seals, races, rotors, all that stuff. And uh, and then like in the next couple days I'll try to get the whole frame stripped down so I can start getting it all cleaned up and whatever. And then uh, go from there, a lot of welding and stuff to do. I got some plates that I want to do on the frame. Um, these, oh, it's a 77 Oldsmobile chassis or like Ralphie. <laughs> Ralphie's Customs and uh, Danny from uh, uh, DG Retro Customs, they, they say chassis. Sh how do you guys say it? Chassis? 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 No, chassis. Anyways, <laughs> um, if you guys haven't checked their channels, I go check them out. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, after I get something figured out with the motor mounts, I want to get the motor pulled out and I got to pull the transmission and all that. And I might set the new, uh, we gotta go pick up the new motor, but I might set the new motor and transmission in there. I already have the transmission. I wanna sit it in the car. I know it's identical to this one, but you don't wanna have a brand new motor and transmission and then have your mock-up motor and transmission in your car, get ready to pull them out when you're when it, the frame's all painted and stuff and then have to build some new mounts because something is a half inch off or you have to cut something and then repaint the frame or whatever, you know? So just kinda keeping it real, I guess. Um, I'll get the back part all jacked up and whatever and uh, start blowing some, some parts off this thing. Uh, I'll probably shut the camera off and just get some stuff done and I'll turn the camera back on a little bit. I don't know, I might even set the camera up in a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, this video might be just long, boring me jamming on the car. We'll see what happens. Wear safety glasses, don't be a dumbass.
All right, so I got that uh, cross member finished up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the plate still on this uh, open spot on the frame and I'll notch it and go over the top of that cross member and then weld everything solid. And then put some gussets and uh, braces and everything else in there. And then I'm gonna get ready to pull the uh, A-arms and everything off right now. Got the motor out like literally right now, but like a dumbass, I left it up in the air. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back down. That way it doesn't fall down. <clears throat> I built this a while back though. This thing's freaking sweet. So cut this out and welded it on there. And then uh, two bolts, you just slip the chain right over the top of it, welded the piss out of it. And then if you want the motor, you know, to tilt the other way, because like on the Chevy trucks, it's a pain in the ass. You got to tilt them the other way to, um, you know, get the LSs and stuff in there. So what you do is you just flip this uh, little engine carriage deal that I built. You just flip it around so that this is at the front and it tilts them back the other way. And then when you uh, want to get them in there, you just tilt it back a little bit, drop it in and let go of it. Works awesome. Super easy to build. It's built out of three eighths inch steel plate, super thick. <clears throat> so it's not going nowhere. But I'm um, getting ready to pull the rear end and the A-arms and all that, but I'll go ahead and get this motor sat down and then go from there. So I lost some footage. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if I hit the wrong button or what, but I had some footage of the frame and stuff with everything off of it. And it took off on me somewhere. So anyways, I'm refilming that. But uh, I got the rear end out. It's sitting over there. We're going to do the disc brake conversion on that. That'll get sandblasted. The frame will get sandblasted and everything. I've been talking about that. Uh, new drive line, brand new motor, brand new transmission. And uh, then I got to get the ugly part of this frame in the front all clean and square and true and plumb and nice looking. And then I want to work on the body mounts a little bit, get them a little, little bit better looking. And then one of the things that I am doing, let's, let's see if I can do this one handed. Um, the motor mounts are really ugly looking right now. And that's just those were temporary just so I could weld them in there so it held the motor and then I went in here and welded the piss out of this stuff so this is super strong and then I'm plating all the motor mounts so they're like this and then I'm gonna you know plate it so that everything here let me get on this other side so you guys can see sorry about the crappy ass camera work I'm trying to look at this and film through the camera at the same time but anyways, you can kind of see how the motor mounts, you know, I'm gonna smooth them out like this. And then on this side, on this side, I'll run it down here and then, uh, you know, where it smooths out. And then same on this side, I'll run it right to the frame so it looks a little bit better. All these will get ground and I'm gonna put plugs in those and weld all these holes up because I don't need these plugs, these holes. Um, all this stuff like that's my center line that I use when I drop the motor in and everything but um all this stuff I'll get smoothed out so it's nice and flush and clean looking and just tons of welding to do on this thing and uh even this kind of stuff I don't need it so it's getting welded up all these holes this kind of stuff so it's gonna be a lot of welding so I guess I'll get after it all right so what I'm doing now is uh I built these plates and I'm getting those uh, TIG welded into the frame and I'm gonna just spot weld them all over the place. That way I can trim the edges and get everything perfect where I want it. So it's as perfect as I can get it. And then I'll go back through and I'll uh, TIG weld all the edges. So it's nice and clean. So when I go to grind it, it'll just take a quick, you know, lap over the top of the welds with a flapper sander.
then what I'll do is I'm pulling it up to where I want it so it matches the other side. And as soon as I pull it up, then I'll put another spot wall here, and then here, and then here, and then kind of walk through the whole setup. I'm running real low heat on the TIG. I don't want this to get real hot because I don't, this is a, this is like a 14 gauge steel sheet metal and I don't want to warp all crazy or whatever. And I can still move it around with a hammer as much as I need so that this uh, matches real nice. And then what I did is these patterns that I made, I made two so that when I set this motor mount, I adjusted it out to where it needed to be. And I did that with the motor in the car so that I know that when I put this motor back in here, um, the engine will have the same exact mounts for the motor mounts, you know, and that didn't move and this didn't move because I had everything, you know, uh, solid where it went. <clears throat> and how I did that is I built, built these really strong mounts here and then all i'm doing is going through and plating everything and then this one's going to go here um it goes like sorry about the camera work so this one's going to go in here like this and i'll do it on both sides there will be one there and then this little piece here is going to float down to here and then i'm going to bring this into the frame here so everything's nice and clean looking so when i grind it and smooth it and paint it or powder coat it whatever we decide to do it'll just look real trick nice clean simple and then I'll go back through and I'll, I'll uh, run a TIG weld. I'll TIG weld all this stuff here and everything real clean. So when I hit this with a grinder, all I got to do really is just kind of flap right over the top of it with a flapper wheel and then smooth it out. And when it gets hit with primer or whatever we're going to use on it, it'll be nice and smooth, super clean. One of the things I was going to say, though, is when you're doing stuff like this, don't just... Uh, you know don't just grind the, or try to go through the rust and put something on there and weld it up or whatever but uh <clears throat> man it's freaking that's the time of my head um when you put a piece of plate on there or whatever on something that you're welding take the time and clean it you know that's one of the things that drives me crazy is when you see people trying to weld on rust or whatever you know grind it down to bare metal and then when you put your ground on somewhere grind that down to bare metal and then i actually took the extra step here and I use a brush, and I know you could do this on stainless and aluminum and whatever, but I, I do it on the steel also. And then I have uh, rubbing alcohol, denatured uh, alcohol. And what I do is I go through and I clean everything where there's gonna be a weld with a rag really, really good. So that when you go to weld, you'll see the difference. I mean, it's, it's like a huge difference when you go to get everything cleaned up and then you go to weld on a, a panel or a fender together or even like what I'm doing now, you know, the frame itself is real thick, but the sheet metal stuff that I'm welding to, which is like 14 gauge, I believe is what it was, um, those panels that I'm welding to that frame, it just, it welds so much nicer with the TIG welder. And I mean, if you're doing it with a MIG welder, you know, clean it up and weld it, but with the TIG, you wanna make sure it's cleaned up really nice. So, um, I don't know if I'll keep filming or what, call this a day, I don't know yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep welding on this stuff, but I don't know if I'll keep doing the run of the camera. Heidi's supposed to be back, but I don't know where she's at right now. 
um, I just want to get this stuff done. So we'll see what happens. I want to thank my buddy uh, Dave Smithers too because uh, he helped me get this welder all figured out. We were having problems with it, but it's super nice to be able to use the TIG welder again. It was just operator error. But when you're uh, when you're doing something like I'm going to TIG weld all this, a uh, little tip or whatever you want to call it, um, as long as you have like nice clean edges where you don't have big gaps. You can go ahead and just TIG weld this, and all I did was uh, no filler rod, just take the tungsten, touch it here, hit your pedal, full throttle, give that bitch some power, and then it'll just give you a little molten lava right there, you know, a little pool, and then just let off. And then, uh, you know, you can do a bunch of spot welds like that. That way your pan this piece here is held up there, and then I'll get this one spot welded in, and then when I'm done, I'll just take the filler rod and just dab every once in a while and just run right a nice little bead right through here. And then, you know, this is kind of a gap, so I'll definitely use filler rod here. But uh, it just makes it nicer if you can get the gaps better like this. But like on this one here, I hung it over, marked it, traced it on the backside, cut the piece here, stuck it up there. And, and like I said, just took the, uh, the tungsten and just gave it a little one of these right here, like uh, two seconds and let off. And then that's what I'll do is I'll just run a bunch of spot, you know, like I'll put another spot weld here. That way this pat, this doesn't open up here. And then I'll push this in with the body hammer and then spot that. And then when I'm ready, I'll have a couple spots and just, you know, run a bead all through here. And then when I'm done with that, all I gotta do is run a flapper wheel over that and it's gonna be nice and clean. So when this thing gets painted, there won't be no body filler or nothing on the frame. So the frame won't crack nothing, you know, when it's, uh, you know, when it, when it, moves around or whatever when it flexes. So this is the time cons time consuming part right here. I don't know if you can see that camera. I took my Sharpie and, and marked it right here. I need to take about an eighth inch off, zero over here, zero over here, but like an eighth inch in the middle. And, and what I'll do is I'll get this ground down and I'll show you the part that I'm building real quick. Wear safety glasses, don't be a dumbass. We'll go fit that up. So I got that piece all trimmed out. It took me, like I, I did it off camera. It took me like four more times to get the shape where I wanted it. And then, ah. Sorry about the camera work. And then it sits in there like this. So I'll go ahead and start getting that thing spot welded in with the, uh, with the TIG and I put a very little very little bit of a you know a real small radius or whatever on this edge but can't even really tell <clears throat> what I was going to say though is uh, you know it helps when you Try to get the gaps almost perfect because then when you're going to TIG weld something, it just makes it nice, you know? You don't have to fight it. Um, it's, and you can do it with the TIG and it's nice and clean looking instead of uh, with the MIG. Which, you know, you can do a good job with the MIG too if that's all you got. It's not a big deal.
And then what I'll do is I'll flip the camera around and show you what I'm doing. So I'm just adding this piece right here. And then that way when this all gets welded, it'll be nice and clean looking. Everything's just spot welded on there right now. I need to weld up this side right here, up the front, down the side, over here, over there. And then this piece is already in there. But then when I get all this stuff ground and clean looking, it'll look nice and smooth, you know? A lot more uh, welding to do. But I gotta pull that tungsten out and grind it on the TIG. It's starting to weld like crap, so. But I think I'll stop this video here and then uh, film some more after a while. Thanks for watching. Well, I'm not gonna say it's done, but I got a lot of stuff done on the motor mounts today, so they'll look a lot better once they're all cleaned up and and then all that filler primer will fill up all these uh, pinholes on these welds. You know, when I'm doing the filler primer, a lot of times I'll just take my hand and go like that and smear it. And then, you know, the second, and third coat after it's sanded, it'll uh, knock all that stuff out and make it look perfect. And then uh, when we paint this frame, it'll look like glass. And then tomorrow, I think what I'm gonna do is start jamming on getting all these holes done up. Aaron was just here and we were talking. I think what we're gonna do is just plate all these holes because I mean, there's so many of them. You know, like this stuff, I'm not going to use none of these holes, so. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, I got some stuff I got to do today. Tomorrow I got doctor's appointments and stuff, so tomorrow's going to get all messed up. But, oh well. Hit the subscribe button. Appreciate you guys watching. Later. All right, so I got this uh, motor mount all welded up. And, <clears throat> excuse me, all these holes that were here, what I did is I made some plates to go behind here. That way I can zip them up, every one of them. And look at it now, look at the difference. Way smoother and nicer looking. Once that's all primed and sanded, it'll be beautiful.